Hi and welcome to this week's web design video blog. In today's video, we will be completing our two-part tutorial on how to create a CSS sprite navigation bar. Last week, we prepared the sprite in HTML list, so all we need to do now to complete the navigation is to write the CSS. So let's pick up where we left off last week. I have the HTML and the CSS sprite that we've previously prepared. I'm working in Dreamweaver on the split view so that we can keep track of uh, our progress in the design view at the same time as writing the coding. Now, first thing obviously we need to do is create a external style sheet. So I've uh, created one here, and I'm just going to drag it into the code view in the head of my HTML file, like so. First of all, we need to add five new IDs. So first of all, to the unordered list, I'm going to add the ID of navigation. Obviously, you can name this whatever you uh, wish. I also need to add individual IDs to each of the bullet points or lists. So the first one we'll call nav home. The second one we will call nav about. So I'm just referencing the actual pages that we're going to be using. Third one, nav gallery. And finally, the fourth one obviously will be nav contact. So all with them there is added five new IDs, which will allow us now to access the style sheet so we can start to style them up. So first of all, we're going to style the navigation. So I've given the bullet point unordered list the uh, ID of navigation. So now we can define certain CSS rules for it. First of all, I'm going to set the margin and the padding to zero. Then I'm going to specify the width of the navigation, which will obviously be the width of our CSS sprite image. Uh, in the example, it's 378 pixels wide, and the height is 44 pixels. So that's the height of one of the states, so not the entire sprite, but just the height of half of it, which will be the height of the navigation. We're then going to bring in the CSS sprite for the first time, and it's, if we go to browse, I've left this in the folder. Okay, and that's all we need to do for our navigation ID to style the, um, the unordered list. Next, we're going to style the bullet points. Again, I'm going to reset the margin and the padding to zero. I'm then going to do list style type and set that to none. This hides the little individual bullet point icons. I'm then going to display inline, which will allow the bullet points to sit next to each other. I'm again going to reference the height of the navigation, which will be the height of the bullet points, which is 44 pixels. I'm going to text, uh, sorry, align the text to the center, which will be a little bit more relevant later on. And I'm then going to also float left, which uh, allows the bullet points again to sit next to each other. But we have to have that in there, as you'll see later on when we use display block. I'm then going to set the line height to 40 pixels. Okay, and that's all the uh, standard default styling we need to do to the individual lists. All we now need to do with the navigation ID is set the link behaviors. So I'm going to add display block to the navigation links. This will allow the whole button and not just the text to become a link. And again, I'm just going to specify the height of the links, which again is the height of the bullet points, the height of the navigation, 44 pixels. I'm then going to specify some settings for the hover state or the overstate. First of all, I need to bring in the background image sprite again, but this time for the last one, last time. Okay, so let's just review where we're up to. So we have our bullet points sat next to each other. We've brought in the uh, the sprite for the background of the navigation, and we've also specified the width. Now we can style the individual bullet points because obviously they're uh, slightly different sizes to each other. Okay, so the first one is nav home. And we're going to specify, specify the individual width of this bullet point. And I've measured all these individually in Photoshop. So the first one's 95 pixels. And an easy way to do this in Photoshop is if you use the marquee tool to select the width of each bullet point and then use the info uh, control panel to find out the width and the heights as necessary. So our first bullet point, which is the home one, is 95 pixels wide. What I'm then going to do is specify what happens to the background when you hover over that button. 
So again, I'm going to type out nav home and then specify what happens on hover. So because I've already specified the background image in the navigation hover state, uh, which is two lines above this, all I now need to do is just reference a new background position, which can slide the image to reveal the darker sprite section. So first of all, I'll align it to the bottom so that we see the bottom part. And I'm then going to specify zero pixels because we want this to be essentially bottom left to reveal the first one. So again, let's have a little quick look in the design view. If I just switch to live view, and we can see there the first sprite in the navigation working. And let's go back to the code view and finish the other four buttons. So next we have nav about. Again, the width of this is slightly different, 94 pixels. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the hover state just to speed this up. So let's change that to about. And what we now need to do is we need to slide the background position across the width of the original one, which is 95, so that it slides along to the next one, which is the about. So let's specify minus 95 pixels. Third button is nav gallery. And the width of this one, different again, which is uh, 93 pixels. So I'm just repeating the same process for all four of the buttons. So this time, in order to get the third part of the sprite, I need to add up the first two buttons so that it slides across far enough to get to the third one. So if I add uh, 95 and 94 together, I get minus 189 pixels. And then the last one, nav contact. Different again, again this one's 96 pixels wide. So in order to get the last position, I need to add up all three of the previous buttons, which gives me minus 282 pixels. So now if we take a look again in the design view, and we'll switch to live view to reference how it will look in a browser, we have our CSS sprite navigation working. Now you will see that the blue text is still visible and above the navigation. Now if you wanted to prepare your sprite without the text in Photoshop and have real text on your navigation, obviously you could then further style this. However, if like us in the example you want to remove this uh, blue HTML text just to reveal the pictures behind, what we can then do is specify a new line of CSS. Again, if we go navigation, span, display, none which will hide whatever we put inside the span tags go back to the code view and if we then wrap inside the links which is quite important wrap the text within these span tags what we're actually telling the browser to do is to not show the text So if I just uh, complete that for all four, close that last one, save that, and then if we go back to our design view, you can now see that our CSS sprite navigation is fully working with the hover states, and the search engines can also still access the navigation um, when the search engine spiders come to crawl it like normal. So there we have a SEO friendly CSS sprite navigation. Thank you for watching this week. If you have any comments or contributions, please leave them on our supporting blog post at createdesign.co.uk forward slash blog forward slash videos.